Day 7 of the Chronopocalypse. I venture out into the nearly empty streets of the city to forage for food. Will I get lucky today? I scan the empty shelves, searching for food, anything. Ah, a lonely box of cornflakes. I'll take it. The meat aisle, virtually devoid of any protein, but I get lucky today. A lone pack of sirloin. Meanwhile, all the other shells remain empty. I'm dying for some spaghetti. No noodles, but there's some ragu. Now that's Italian. A lonely can of soup on this shelf. I continue to scan the empty shells, and I come upon a whole bunch of suddenly salad. Why? Is there something wrong with them? I better leave them alone. Well, never mind. I'll grab one. The juice aisle, devoid for weeks. But today, I get lucky. Sunny D. I won't get scurvy after all. Meanwhile, in the vegetable pizza area, mostly untouched. Yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that one. I'm not that hungry yet. Two loaves of bread. I grab one. We call this the Bernie Sanders aisle. Toilet paper continues to be scarce because of all the assholes. So many assholes. Meanwhile, spring is here. The trees bloom. The grass turns green. And with it, frickin' weeds. Crab grass. I gotta get back to the store and get some weed and feed. Check. You have canned and packaged food, canned milk, fruit juices, and water to last your family three days. Check. You have a civil defense first aid disaster kit, and at least one member of your family is trained in first aid. Check. Make sure your utilities are properly tagged for prompt emergency action. You will be prepared. You will know what to do instantly to help ensure the survival of you, your family, your country. Alright everybody, so what a completely different world it is today versus a week ago from the last video. Last Sunday, my video, in my video, you know, we were making fun of how the Democrats picked two old white guys to be their candidates. This past week, hardly any news of those two guys at all. Because the coronavirus lockdown, the corona apocalypse, has begun. And that news has been dominating the airwaves since, all week. Millions of us have lost our jobs. Theaters, uh, restaurants, uh, bars, gyms, uh, airlines, travel agencies. Uh, all losing our jobs, myself included. I'm a bartender. I was uh, furloughed last Monday. My girlfriend and my daughter both furloughed this past Wednesday. So, we're all unemployed. Already applied for unemployment. Of course, it's not going to be near enough, but oh well. We can't work. Twiddling my thumbs. You can, uh, you can see I haven't shaved. So, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, don't know what's going to happen. There's no end in sight. I mean, uh, my place is not planning on opening until June 4th. That's quite a long time away for me to not be working. And I ain't going to lie, this is the first time in my life that I've been unemployed. I'm 55. Uh, I got my first job at uh, Denny's when I was 15. I was a dishwasher. So for 40 years I've been employed continually till this past week. It's a weird feeling. But uh, there has been some help. The Catholic Church issued a decree saying that all people who have been affected by the coronavirus in a negative way will be absolved of all their sins. We got that going for us. You know, <laughs> it's that kind of shit that's so annoying. How many billions is the Vatican, the Catholic Church, worth? There's, what, 40 million people in Italy, and Italy is one of the hardest hit countries. You know, the Catholic Church could take some of those billions and give everybody in Italy 
some dollars, some money to get by. But uh, one has the feeling that that's simply not going to happen. Anyway, Gal Gadot, a woman who I usually admire and am a fan of, posted a completely tone-deaf video in which she and other celebrities, Sarah Silverman, Natalie Portman, whatever, uh, sing the John Lennon classic, Imagine. So they had the gall to sit there and sing the lyrics, Imagine no possessions, no need for greed or hunger, as they sit in their mansions, and uh, meanwhile people across the world don't know if they're going to pay their rent, not sure if they're going to have a meal to eat in the next few days. Yeah, gal, I'm sure it's easy to imagine no possessions, but quite frankly, you're not going to give any of them up either. But uh, meanwhile, libs continue to blather on about it being called the China virus. Look, the virus originated in a wet market in Wuhan, China. That's where it came from. It's called the China virus because that's where it originated. What the perpetually offended really, really should be screaming and yelling about is those wet markets. Those should be shut down. Wet markets in China are a haven for filth and disease. And uh, it's only a matter of time before another disease comes out of it. Well, let's say we beat coronavirus. They still have those disgusting wet markets in China. Another one's coming. It won't stop. No business with China should be conducted by any country in the world until China shuts those things down. Now, in San Francisco, people are just walking into stores, loading up bags of stuff, and walking out without a care in the world. Why? Because the San Francisco politicians decided that if you steal 950 or less dollars worth of groceries or whatever, you can go in a store and take something and it's less than 950 dollars, you can't be arrested. Now, they can give you a ticket if they catch you, but you won't be arrested. And uh, I, for the life of me, don't see the point in a law like that. I know they're trying to make it look like their crime statistics are lower. You're just asking for people to do what they're doing right now. Just go in and steal shit. I feel sorry for the people. I feel sorry for people who own small businesses and stores in San Francisco because these people just go in and steal what they want, leave, Nothing happens, and it's going to get worse. I don't know. It's probably the dumbest law I have ever seen enacted in any place in the world. But anyway, uh, what will the next week hold? Who knows? I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands, so I'm probably going to be putting more videos up. But uh, if not, I'll see you next Sunday. All right? Yeah. Hold out. I venture outside into the bleak, cold, quiet world. Everything's still. No one moving. Not a soul in sight. There's only one person that I'm in contact with and the madness has taken her. I can only just leave her alone and hope it passes. So for the time being, Arthur Morgan is my only companion. Helps me pass the time as I eat a diet of junk food and, you know, pork skins and of course the necessary Jack Daniels to get me by. And I ask myself, when, when will it end? Ah!